today's video is all about pinwheel sandwiches. I'll talk about the basics of creating these beautiful little rolls of sandwichy goodness, then I'll talk about different filling options, and of course, how to present them. Have you ever made these before? Today we're going to make three different flavours. I think it's safe to say we all love a basic sandwich, but sometimes we just want to fancy things up a little. Pinwheel sandwiches not only look fantastic with the visible colours of the filling showing, but also make a perfect lunchbox or finger food option. Let's get straight into it. I've got some wheat meal, white and multi-grain bread here. This will create a nice variety in colour and texture. First I'm going to cut the crusts off the bread. As a finger food option, they do look so much fancier with them cut off. But if this was for one of my kids' lunch boxes, I'd leave the crusts on. Because all kids need to eat their crusts at school, right? Next I'm going to roll them flat with a rolling pin. But why do we do this? Sandwich bread is light and fluffy, so by rolling it, we compress it, which makes it easier to layer, and most importantly, it makes it so much easier to roll into a pinwheel. Now we can add our base layer of spread. I'm not sure if you've seen any of my other videos on sandwich making, but today I'm being different and not using mayonnaise. I'm using cream cheese for this one and spreading it on generously. This is essentially our moisture barrier that will stop the bread from going soggy. Once we've got it spread, add a second slice of bread slightly overlapping and press it down to join the slices of bread together. Now we can spread the cream cheese on these pieces too, and we're ready for the fillings. The first flavour we're making is date, crystallised ginger and dried apricot. This is such a delicious combination. You want to have all the fillings cut fairly small so that they don't hinder you from rolling up the sandwich. We're making pin wheels after all, not pin squares or pin lumps, so don't have big chunky pieces of filling. Oh, and a little finely chopped parsley to add some greenery won't go amiss. Remember you can see the fillings in pinwheel sandwiches, so little things like this definitely add to the overall look. Let's roll this up. It's as easy as it sounds. Start at the one end and roll it as tightly as you can. If you roll it loosely, it could end up unrolling on you when you cut it. If you're making these ahead of time, you can wrap them in plastic wrap and put them in the fridge until you're ready to cut and serve them. The filling for our next pinwheel is going to be this yummy pumpkin hummus, ham and capsicum. You can make or buy so many different flavours and colours of hummus or spreads. You can almost have any colour of the rainbow. They can add flavour or just act as your moisture barrier so choose your base layer accordingly. Next I'm going to add some sliced ham. Don't put it right to the end because when you roll it up, the ham will slide out a little. I'm adding the capsicum horizontally so that it'll roll easily. If you add something hard like carrot sticks vertically and try to roll it, it could easily tear into the bread and end up making a big mess. Lastly, for a wee pop of green, I have some chopped spring onion. And it's rolling time. I'm tucking it in and rolling it as tightly as I can without tearing the bread. You can either wrap them like we did earlier if you're making them ahead of time. Otherwise, if you're going to eat them fairly soon, just pop a tea towel over and keep them cool. I find they cut just as easily freshly made as they do having been in the fridge for a while. For our last filling today, I've got some shredded chicken and cranberries mixed with chives and a little cream cheese. I'm using cream cheese as my base again and then spreading on this delicious topping. The colours of the fillings are so important because they will be seen when they're cut. Choose a delicious flavour combination and then add in more colour with herbs or other fillings. You want it to stand out and look as good as it tastes. Now we can roll them up and they're ready to cut. To cut them, make sure you use a sharp knife and a sawing action to create a clean cut. 
I'm using a small serrated paring knife. Small job, small knife. If your knife gets grubby in between cuts, give it a wipe so you don't ruin your presentation. This is one of my most used knives. I recently made a video on the knives I use in my kitchen. You might want to check it out. I'm going to plate these alternating between the three different flavours and mix up the different colours. I love this blue plate too as it contrasts with the colours in the sandwiches. Hmm, These rolls have ended up slightly different thicknesses and don't actually look great mixed up. Some are bigger than others, so I'm going to rethink this plating option. Let's use this square plate instead and overlap the pieces slightly. Since these rolls are different thicknesses, keeping each roll together will make it look so much tidier. I've also put the wheat meal bread in the centre to separate the two lighter coloured rolls. Make sure the cut side is your presentation side by turning over the end piece. Otherwise, you can trim the end pieces off. Oh, they are so dainty, aren't they? I love the different colour combinations plated together. It looks visually appealing and I'm sure it will be enjoyed. Another thing you can do is to cut them slightly thicker, maybe only into three, and stick in a fancy skewer. Then you can plate them standing upright. Or you can even stick a cherry tomato into the skewer first to be even more fancy. Don't these look so petite and delicious? These look great on a plate or board, or slightly piled up together in a shallow bowl. They're so easy to pick up and enjoy. If you enjoy making dainty little morsels like these, I'm sure you'll love this video on making an amuse bouche. They're intensely flavoured, bite-sized appetisers. See you over there. Happy pinwheeling!